Hello, everyone. It's time for The Other Sideline. I'm joined by Ben Parker of CardinalSportsReport.com. That's Stanford's home on the Rivals.com network. Ben, let's get right to it. Final game of the regular season for both Notre Dame and Stanford. This is a game that was not played last year because of the pandemic, but these are two teams that I think have a lot of similarities in terms of what they want out of their student athletes. How big is this game uh, for Stanford in terms of just the rivalry with Notre Dame? It's big. You know, I think for them at this point, it's all they have left to play for, right? And, I mean, the same Kibben said a week ago when they had Cal left, you know, that was another big rivalry game for them as well. I think that's their biggest rivalry game, actually, of the year. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's huge, um, you know, for them uh, at this point. You know, this is kind of their bowl game, really, you know, because they're not going to go to a bowl game. So, mm. yeah, it's a it's a huge game for them, and this is one that they absolutely uh, want to win just for the sake of pride, and I think – I think there's a certain feeling amongst the players, amongst the team, the staff, that they're much better, much more capable than what they've shown the last few weeks. And so to have one final big-time opponent to hopefully end the season on some sort of positive note is, is huge for them. Yeah, Stanford is 3-8 and eight overall in the season, 2-7 and seven in the Pac-12. Uh, an odd year, particularly early. I mean, they, they, they win at USC 42-28. Uh, of course, one of the, one really the marquee wins for anyone uh, in the country, their win early on in week five against Oregon. But then it just fell off after that. They played a Friday night game at Arizona State, uh, right, lose by 28 to 10. And then it's just been kind of it's, it's not been a great year since then. What, in your opinion, what happened at, at that point? Yeah, I think one of the big problems is, is I think they've been, they've been hit hard by injuries. Um, just the injury bug hit them hard. Um, they lost Bryson Tremaine. Um, in the Oregon game, he was kind of their top receiver at the time. Um, and when he went out, that sucked a lot of air out of the offense. And then kind of since then, you know, a lot of different guys um, kind of went out uh, at different times of the season. Uh, they were without, you know, uh, you know EJ, uh, EJ Smith for part of the time. Austin Jones uh, missed, part, missed a little time as well. Um, and then, you know, um, you know, and then they already kind of were a little shorthanded with like Jonathan McGill and Salim Chair Muhammad not coming back until I mean McGill didn't play this last week and Muhammad was the week before that. So yeah. uh, injuries played a role. And then on top of that, too, I, I think as well, there were legitimate issues, which I think we're, we're going to talk about later with the run game. The defensive defensive line hasn't been great all year. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think when they were at full strength, they were just capable enough to maybe shock some people, pull off some upsets. Um, um, and then I think when the injuries happened, it just kind of exposed some underlying issues that were also there that maybe were being masked a bit. So it's kind of a combination of injuries and also just like there are legitimate issues that they do need to fix and address. One of the injuries I know Stanford's had to deal with is Tanner McKee has not been available the whole season, but he is back, correct? And he, yeah. a former Rivals 100 prospect in the class of 2018. I remember him from Rivals camp, super talented kid. Looks like a kid that can really attack the field with his arm strength. Um, where is he at right now in the season? Uh, and, and I guess evaluate for Notre Dame fans kind of his performance lately. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, he didn't have the best game against Cal. Um, you know, didn't have a touchdown pass. Um, I think he threw a couple interceptions, I think. I, got, I, I, I can't remember the stat shit exactly, but not his best performance, obviously, but he was coming off of an injury, off of a knee injury. Um, I mean, pre-knee injury, I mean, he was looking good. Uh, you know, looks like a very promising talent. Um, and, you know, only a sophomore. Um, although it's funny, Stanford likes to call him a freshman because, like, it's just for, it's a weird thing they do with that. But yeah. he's a young guy um, and just tons of talent, tons of upside potential, great physical tools to work with. Um, so, you know, when he's at full strength, he looks really, really good. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the I think with the injury and just being out for the four whatever weeks it was, um, he's a little rusty. So I don't know if Stanford's going to see the full Tanner McKee this week at full strength. Um, but I do think having the game against Cal helped him. And it was against a really good defense, too. So, I mean, um, yeah. So uh, he looks he does look good when he's at full strength. But it's kind of hard to know what to expect from this week out of him, given what he's coming back from. Um, John Humphreys, uh, uh, one of the receivers in, in, in that core that is you're expecting to be out this week, correct? He's a, yeah. he's a player that Notre Dame recruited. They offered. They recruited hard. Uh, so – where is Stanford's wide receiver core without him? Uh, and and any is there anyone else that's injured or, or you feel that can step up and exploit Notre Dame's defense? 
Yeah, listen, I think without uh, John Humphreys, the main guy to look for um, at the wide receiver core is uh, Michael Wilson. Michael Wilson is kind of the kind of go-to receiver right now with him out. Um, and then, you know, Elijah Higgins is another guy um, that they have. I mean, then obviously tight end Benjamin Urasek is another guy. Um, so those are probably the three guys that Terry McKee is going to mostly be targeting right now um, with, uh, you know, it'll be targeting right now with, with, with Humphreys out. Um, it's going to be Higgins. It's going to be hum. It's going to be Higgins. It's going to be Urasic, and it's going to be Wilson. Those three guys, um, and also Silas starting other wide receivers going to be out as well. So that's something to make note of as well. So it's really those three guys um, as far as the receiving core is concerned. But you're right though. Before Humphreys was out, uh, he he was becoming a favorite target of McKee mm-hmm. and was making an impact for him. Yeah, and one of those kind of like typical tall. Stanford wide receivers that you feel particularly down in the red zone that, you know, yeah. we've become so accustomed to seeing Stanford having big targets at, at the receiver position. Um, defensively, you know, another oddity about Stanford this year as it relates to their program in general over the years is that statistically on defense, they're they're downright poor, right? I mean, on yeah. run offense is 126th in the nation. Or excuse me, the run defense, 127th in the nation. Their pass defense, statistically better. They're they're 30th, but but overall, their total defense is 109th. What what has been the problem? I guess in in, in your opinion, with with how they've performed this year. Yeah, it starts with the defensive line. The run defense has been atrocious. It's just been bad, and they just keep finding ways to give up like large swaths of yardage to uh, to, to running backs. Um, and it's funny because there's moments where they're able to get a stop, able to make a big play, um, but then all of a sudden, like, a guy will just burst for 50, 60, 70 yards, whatever. Um, and I think it starts at the D-line level. Uh, Thomas Booker's a really good defensive uh, defensive end yeah. they got. Um, but, you know, outside of him, he's kind of all they got on that D-line, really. And so if you're able to kind of key in on him and take him out of the game, um, then the run game really opens up for opposing running – for opposing, opposing runners – um, and, and just in general, it feels like kind of the interior defense is really the problem. They got guys that can rush on the outside and make things tough for you. Gabe Reed's a really good uh, pass rusher, for example. So they got guys that can rush on the outside, but it's really that interior defense. And if you just kind of take out Thomas Booker and you neutralize him, then all of a sudden the run game becomes really easy to exploit and you can put up large chunks of yardage. So it's really kind of that front seven, I think, that's really the, the problem and really all about you take Booker out, he doesn't have anybody else in the defensive line that really help him. So that's that's really been the problem, I think. That's just my opinion. I won't put you on the spot with a score prediction. I know that's uh, sometimes it's too early in the week to do that. We're recording this. No, on I got Tuesday. one. You got one. Okay. Well, well, uh, why don't you uh, provide us your prediction, but also just a little bit of color on, on what you feel Stanford would need to do to win this game. Yeah. So Notre Dame fifty-five, Stanford ten is my prediction for this oh, game. Oh boy. Yeah. So 55 to 10 is how I see this shaking out for the Irish. I think they're going to win this game rather easily. They should. Um, and, it, and it just comes down to the fact that you look at what Stanford's done the past few weeks. I mean, they got whooped by Cal, and Cal isn't even that good, really. I mean, Cal came in, but, you know, you know only one win more than they did. Yeah. And there was a two-point spread. So getting whipped by Cal, they got whipped by Utah. Um, Oregon State handled them pretty easily. I mean, so there's just not a lot of reason to really expect Stanford to keep this game even close. So 55 to 10 might even be generous. I mean, Notre Dame could be more than that, honestly. Um but, I mean, let's, let's just say for the hypothetical situation, Stanford does exceed my expectations and they keep us close or, you know, they somehow pull out an upset. Yeah. Um, it's really going to have to start with the run defense being able to stop and prevent big plays. Um, so if Notre Dame has big plays in the run game, it's game over. So the run defense is going to have to do a lot better than what they've done. Um, and, then, and then obviously, too, you know, another area that I think Stanford has really lacked this year has been special teams and just the return game. Mm-hmm. Um, they got guys that, you know, Nathaniel Pete's a guy that I thought would do more in the return game. He hasn't. Um, so, you know, they're going to need to get, you know, a big return out of him, a touchdown return, something crazy like that. And then defense is going to also have to force, force some turnovers, get an INT, force a fumble. Um and then also, too, it just comes back to Tanner McKee and him feeling more comfortable, more better, offense flowing better. So, I mean, look, I mean, the Oregon game obviously should give Stanford some hope that, look, they've done this before. No one thought they beat Oregon, and they did. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's enough of a reason for Notre Dame to, like, not take these guys lightly. That, hey, these guys did pull off an upset before, and these guys are going to be fueled. They're going to be hungry. Um, but if Notre Dame takes Stanford as seriously as they should, it really should be an easy win for the Irish. So I put down – I just submitted this, by the way, to our editor. I, I have Notre Dame 38-10. to 10. 
That's presuming they don't have any defensive touchdowns and Stanford plays a, a relatively clean game. So I think we're in the same ballpark because Notre Dame last week got to 55 against Georgia Tech yeah. on the strength of two defensive touchdowns. The way they run their offense is more of like a 30, you know, if they're doing well is more of like a 30 yeah. to 40 point scoring team. They're, they're, Notre Dame isn't going to go run 90 plays from the line of scrimmage. Right, um, right, right, right. But but yeah, that's a interesting prediction. Uh, so we both agree they're going to win. Uh, you know, I mean, for college football fans, I hope it's a good game and that Stanford at least yeah. is real clean and, uh, yeah. and, 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 you know, we could at least have something entertaining to watch. So ben, yeah. ben I appreciate your time, man. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanks, good, Greg. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. Thank you, man. It's good seeing you and, uh, and have fun at the game. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.